Good morning, Grace. First, I want to thank Janae and Crystal. That was amazing. And it was amazing hearing, because I'm seated here behind me, all of your voices. That was really beautiful. So thank you. Uh, my name is Craig Uplinger, if you don't know me. Uh, and uh, I want to welcome you. I get to be the first to formally welcome you to our celebration of the beauty of diversity and the power of gratitude. And I want to open that celebration with a short story of history that gives a little context to our gathering today. And I want to begin that story with a people called the Wampanoag. The Wamp uh, Wampanoags lived in, uh, on the New England coast. And in the early 1600s, they had a lot to be thankful for. And giving thanks was a way of life for them. They lived in 67 villages, 40,000 people. But in 1616, the Wampanoags and other indigenous tribes of that area were exposed to European diseases, and they had no immunity. 90%, 90% of the people of those indigenous communities died in the next three years. In 1620, the Wampanoags encountered another struggling community. In November of that year, 102 English settlers arrived at Plymouth. Forty-one were religious pilgrims seeking to worship God as they wished. The remaining 60 were crew members and paying passengers who had left England for a lot of variety of reasons, very few of them religion. The pilgrims called those settlers strangers, but a harsh winter of disease and starvation made no such distinctions. It killed pil pilgrims and strangers alike. Only 51 survived to see the spring. The Wampanoags and the English settlers had only dying and crisis in common. But out of crisis and dying grew opportunity. They formed an alliance in 1621. English settlers offered the Wampanoags a potential ally against neighboring and rival tribes. The Wampanoags offered the settlers essential knowledge of the environment around them. And that essential knowledge helped produce the great harvest that fall in 1621. One day that fall, the Plymouth settlers prepared to celebrate. And they went out hunting fowl. And the Wampanoags heard the gunfire, and they went to investigate. But when they found out that the gunfire was about celebration and not a threat, they too went hunting and they returned to the Plymouth settlement with a gift of five deer. Thus began a three-day celebration, harvest celebration, where 90 Wampanoag warriors and a curious combination of religious pilgrims and strangers set aside all their differences to give thanks, share meals, compete in games, and pray to their respective gods that gave them peace. You see, the trials of disease and starvation and death had given birth, birth to what we call the first Thanksgiving. But tragically, tragically, that episode was never repeated in our history. The Wampanoags, the other indige indigenous tribes, and the English continued their respective traditions of gratitude and thanksgiving. But their traditions were never again shared. English settlements grew. New epidemics took their toll. Hostilities intensified into war. And the indigenous populations migrated west and faced and oftentimes experienced extinction. The opportunity of 1621 for harmony and peace among a diverse people, well, that flame was all too quickly extinguished. Fast forward to October 3rd, 1789. A newly inaugurated president serving under a newly drafted and ratified constitution, George Washington, issued a Thanksgiving proclamation. He asked the people of the states to devote their service to the great author of all the good that was, is, and ever will be, to offer him sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection to humbly ask him 
to pardon and forgive our national sins and other transgressions and to render unto him a national government, a blessing to all the people, even and maybe even especially the poorest among us. Fast forward to October 3rd, 1863, three months after 54,000 died at Gettysburg Battlefield, the deadliest battle in our deadliest war. President Abraham Lincoln issued a Thanksgiving proclamation. He asked the whole American people to solemnly and gratefully acknowledge and praise with one heart and one voice the gracious gifts of God, to recognize his anger for our sins, to humbly ask his forgiveness for our national perverseness and collective disobedience, to understand that he nevertheless offers us mercy, to remember and care for all of those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers, and to submit to his healing hands the wounds of the nation, and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with his divine purposes. These proclamations were drafted in moments of great uncertainty and crisis. Soon after our nation's revolution, at the beginning of our nation's republic, in the middle of our nation's civil war. And just as in the fall of 1621, future outcomes were unknown, Hardship was a way of life, and death, it seemed, decorated every landscape and could be seen on every horizon. Yet in those moments, some saw opportunity for peace and harmony, for service, for renewal and growth, for, as Lincoln described in his Gettysburg Address just one month after his proclamation, a new birth of freedom. Many believe we are again in a moment of crisis where outcomes are unknown and hardships wait for many on our horizons. I ask you this morning, can we learn from the lessons of history so we can see and seize the opportunity, that opportunity which is always present when a diverse people gathered together in gratitude. So I want you to join me as I pray over our food and offer a blessing. Lord, I pray that as we prepare to eat today and celebrate Thanksgiving this year, that we take the posture of a bowed head and a bent knee, that we celebrate with more humility than pride, that in the course of our celebrations, we take a few moments to lament and ask forgiveness for our national and personal transgressions, disobedience, and sins, that we remember the most vulnerable and marginalized among us and renew our commitment to their care, that we acknowledge the very real vulnerability of our communities and our nation, and that we humbly submit our divisions to his healing hands, that we never fear diversity, but always embrace it and see that in diversity lies opportunities for peace and harmony, for service, for renewal and growth, and for new births. And as a community, I pray we do our part to seize and see the opportunities and prevent them from being all too quickly extinguished. And this I offer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, just a few quick instructions before we get to the food. Uh, if you are tables to the right, my right, if you face back there to be your right, you're going to enter through that door. If you are tables to my left, you are going to enter through that door. If you are tables in the middle, you get choice as to which door to enter. Just don't enter through the middle door because no matter where you enter, that is where everybody will exit. Lorraine, go ahead and right there. Exit door only, yes. Um, and uh, 
Also, when you get up to get your food, please make sure you take the bowl and the plate that's in front of you. Uh, and um, I think you're going to be really impressed and, and I think satisfied with what's back there. So uh, thank you, and uh, please enjoy the meal. Hello, hello? Is it on? Okay, got it.
Go ahead, go get online. I want it to be last. All right. Looks like the line is dwindling. Okay, you can go eat now. Look at the line, it's just about done. No. <laughs> Because uh, I'm speaking while everybody is going to be eat, sitting down to eating. I'll, 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 mm, I do. I do. <laughs> of course you are. I'm trying. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of extra bowls in there for other soups, or just use the same bowl. You can go and, and get um, seconds for sure.
say to everybody, I, I think most of us have been fed, or at least ha you have uh, you know, some soup uh, in front of you. Please don't feel like you have to stop eating. And if you want to go back for some more um, soup, by all means, for those of you who did not get um, dessert, there was the trifle, the whoopie pies, and um, you're not going to want to uh, skip out on that. So um, what be, I don't want you to worry. You can continue to eat while I speak, but I wanted to talk to you um, about diversity and gratitude, the beauty of diversity and the power of gratitude. So for those of you who don't know me, if this is your first time, my name is Lorraine. Um, and uh, I am great. I am so happy to be here. Like, look, like, from my vantage point, this is just so awesome. Truly, this is awesome. So, I, right? I, I, we, give yourselves a big hand. So um, I want to talk about these two powerful virtues, the virtue um, of diversity and the virtue of gratitude that I know that God wants us to embrace as people of God. Now, they may seem like two very different concepts, but they are very much deeply interconnected. Because when we live in, with an attitude of gratitude, when things are different or people are different, we're able to look at people in, in a way of saying, I can appreciate the differences that someone might have. And I believe that when we're able to be grateful for everything that God has given us, even differences among us, um, as we embrace diversity, I think that we will not only have a deeper um, uh, appreciation for one another, but I think that we'll really be able to love one another more fully. So let's first just look at diversity. I want you to know it is like it is part of the framework of the church. Now, the Apostle Paul, he wrote in 1 Corinthians 12, he compares the, the body of Christ, the church, to a whole body, okay? Um, so let me just read this. It's 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 and 13. It says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we will all share that same spirit. Right? Amen is right. Diversity is not a barrier Diversity is God's design for the church. Now, Paul is teaching us that the body, there's nothing uniform about our body, right? It's composed of lots of different parts. We have a brain, we have a mouth, we have an arm. Imagine if our bodies only had one thing, like there was uniformity, where we only had an arm, or we only had a leg, or my little prop here, we only had a mouth. Now, I imagine that some of you think, oh, we know people who only have, seem to have a mouth, right? But if we only had a mouth, we wouldn't be able to do anything because we couldn't get to where we needed to go. You see, like just like the human body, in order to be healthy and functional, the body of Christ the church also needs to have diversity among us because when we appreciate um, the differences among us, we recognize that um, everybody is going to bring something different to the table. Everybody in their life experiences and um, their perspectives brings something different to the table. And the fact that at some point at the end of time, we are told that every tongue, every nation, every person will come together to worship 
the, um, the one true living God, right? Amen. Amen is right. Amen is right. So diversity is part of the church. It's embedded in the church. All right. And I think that when we're diverse, we reflect God's love more um, effectively. So now let's talk about the power of gratitude. Now, um, gratitude um, is that virtue that helps us appreciate the, our differences. It allows us to be thankful. Paul, the Apostle Paul, he said this in Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard our hearts and guard our minds in Christ Jesus. Gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, it shifts our focus from what we lack to what we've been given. Let me say that again. Gratitude, it takes our focus from what we lack to what we've been given. And I think that when we have this attitude where we're grateful, we're able to look at all of the things, big and small, that God has given us, the good things. It could be like you're going to the beach and um, you're grateful because you have a car to get you there. Or if you walk there, that you have the mobility to get there. Or you have the sense of smell to, to smell the, the salt air and look at the ocean. If you're with somebody, you're grateful for the fact that if this is a friend or a partner or a spouse, that you're, you're grateful that you're with them. When we have this attitude of, of recognizing that God has brought us all of these good gifts, all of the good things come from God, then we kind of start to exercise that muscle. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, Lorraine, but how about those circumstances where they're not so good? Are you talking about the sense of toxic, like um, positivity? No, I, I, I'm not. Like, toxic positivity is, is thinking that um, it's almost like we're afraid. We're afraid to be sad. Or we're afraid to be angry. So we're always going to be happy and joyful. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, I think that when we exercise our muscle of gratitude, rather than when something's different, rather than us isolating or being afraid, Gratitude cultivates the muscle of curiosity, where we're more curious why someone might be acting in a challenging way or might be doing something that, uh, you know, I didn't quite see it from, from that perspective. So when we become more curious rather than angry or let me just keep my distance from that person, I think that that kind of gratitude invites diversity. Now, um, I think that gratitude also lessens our ability to um, be envious or compare ourselves to one another um, or just be prideful. I instead, I think that gratitude, it brings us together. It appreciates even the differences. They're like, I, I, I never saw it from that perspective. That's why diversity and gratitude are so interconnected. Now, um, Craig just spoke about uh, a circumstance that happened with the um, native tribes and the early settlers. They both experienced a crisis. And the crisis that brought them together was they both experienced significant death whether it was because the, the settlers had brought disease that the, the Native American Indians um, had never been exposed to, many of them died. Um, the settlers had died because of the fact that they were freezing literally to death. But that, that crisis brought them both together. And, um, and in that Thanksgiving, where they came together, two very different cultures, two very diverse cultures. What they had in common, which was they were grateful to be alive, it was so much greater 
than their differences. How wonderful that the thing that brought them together was, um, was greater than the differences they had. So, you know, unfortunately, as Craig so aptly pointed out, that Thanksgiving um, meal that when we're in elementary school we learn about, that happened one time, just one time. But imagine, imagine what life could have been in this country if that had happened year after year, generation after generation, where you had diverse people coming together to celebrate life together and appreciate one another's differences and the things that they brought to the table. Imagine that. Maybe our history, when we look back at it now, it, it could have sidestepped a lot of um, tragedy and heartache. But like, let's face it, we can't go back, right? We, we don't go back and say, oh, uh, let me, let's do a do-over. But what we can do is that we have an opportunity today. We have an opportunity to embrace diversity and gratitude among us. Because around in this church, we are different, yet we're one, just like the Apostle Paul had said. That each one of us, whether we're straight or gay or um, either we're Caucasian or Latino or African American, we all come together with one spirit. We all come together with one mission, to love one another well. And not just the people in the room, the people outside this room. So on your tables, underneath the pumpkins, there is a puzzle piece. Okay, And that puzzle piece is something that I want you as a table to come up with, an action. Um, uh, so you also have a, on your table this question. It's the same question uh, on either side. It just depends on which side you're sitting on. And I want you to come up with a consensus at your table and have someone who has good penmanship, and if I was at your table, it wouldn't be me, um, but you're going to, um, how can we live in gratitude and embrace diversity here? What can we do? And um, Craig and I will kind of come around we'll, if you have any questions, so you're gonna write it on that puzzle piece. And then, depending upon which table you are, I've tried to make this as easy as possible, possible. Um, we're going to put that as part of this larger community because we are all in this thing together, this thing called life um, together. So um, talk amongst yourselves on what an action point would be on what we can do as a community to live um, in gratitude and embrace diversity. And then when you're done, have somebody raise their hand and that person, whoever you deem okay to do it, will come up and, and uh, pin your piece on the, the larger um, puzzle community. And don't, uh, <clears throat> when you come up, don't put your piece just anywhere. It starts here, one, two. No, that's not one. That's one. Oh, one? Two. Yep. Oh, so we're going lateral. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll direct them right. on where so they need we'll to be. So we'll direct you where to put yep. the, the puzzle piece. One, two, one, two, one it could we're be. really one. looking for action. Action. Yes. That we can do we as can a do. church. Yep. All right, take charge, Carrie. Take charge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, take charge. Take charge. I'm, I'm probably pulling you up first. All right, who's taking charge of your table? The ladies. <laughs> always, right? It's always the ladies. Yes, it's always. Okay. So you. 
you, if you want to write too, you can write too. Yeah, it's an action. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, well, it's got to be a, an action, not judging one another is an action. Okay, you can put that. Yes, that's right. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't think I know you. Young. Young? Yes. Nice to meet you, Lorraine. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think I know you either. No, Trisha. Trisha. Yes, I, and, oh, lovely. Jaden. Jaden. We have a Jaden here already. <laughs> well, it's so it's so uh, good to meet you guys. You came on a day where you're like, whoa. Yeah, I know. You're like, I don't I don't think I was expecting. You wanted to walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you stayed. Yeah. We got uh, number nine. Come on up. Let's see. All right. Thank you, Marlene. Let's see. Number nine. Here we go. We go hold, hold on one minute. Hold, I'll call you up because I don't want to mess this one up. So, uh, okay. So you guys can continue to keep working, but uh, table nine has seek out and ha good handwriting whoever did it um, uh, seek out and introduce yourself to someone to converse who is different than yourself very good table nine all right what table eight what table no, All right, no, no. table eight. That's not, uh, what, what table are you? Look, 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 is it on the table? On, eight says spending table? time together, celebrating each okay. other's accomplishments. Got it. Yes, no, 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 you're right. What table is this? Eight. We should invite them. Yes. Okay, table one. Ours is sharing stories at special events like read it? today. Okay. or during the regular service, holidays, and in response to current events, to have different people who are part of our community share their story. Thank you. 
What table is this? One. Table one. Okay. Uh, I have a bunch of tables in my hand here. Uh, yes. Okay. This is table 12. Okay. Tw table 12. Raise your hands. Where are you guys? Okay. All right. More community outreach actions. Okay. More community outreach actions. Table 12. Okay, table three. Raise your hands. Look at that. Table three. I know we, we should we should really like whoop it up for e each other, don't you think? I know. All right, table three. Let's hear it. Oh. Okay, table three has. Don't judge. Include everyone. Love it. Okay, table three. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, let's give it up for table 14. Woo! Oh, look at this. Organize more events to cultivate kindness, peace, and bringing people together like today. Love that. All right, table 14. All right, let's give it up for table six. All right, advertise both online and in print, Blue Christmas, participate in community events with information um, and invitation to Grace Christian Church. Way to go, Table 6. All right, Table 15, all the way in the back. Okay, Table 15. I love it. Never be judgmental. Accept people for who they are. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Good job. This is 15. Okay, where's table 11? Table 11. Okay, here we give it up for table 11. I love this. Sharing our cultural origin stories more often with food. All right, all right. Uh, table 11. I like that. One. Yeah, we we love food, right? You guys having fun today? Good. All right, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, table 13. All right, give it up for table 13, which is, where's table 13? Oh, okay. We got Addie's table. She's sleeping through the whole thing, I love it. Invite other religious leaders to preach, present their beliefs, and listen to our values as well. Nice, way to go. Thank you, Hadassah. All right. All right, we got table 16. Give it up for table 16. Where is table 16? All the way in the back. Okay. Be more like Jesus by being loving, accepting to all, regardless of differences. Hey, I should have had you preach. <laughs> okay, table five. Table five. Give it up for table five. We got a Duke student in the house. Whoop, whoop. Okay, table five. Recognize parts of Grace's body, a servant spotlight. Host guest speakers to provide different points of view, very much like yours. Um, and intergenerational serving at Grace. I love it. All right. Uh, I was kidding. I'm missing some pieces here. Okay. Uh, Table seven, give it up for table seven. That's right. Woo, woo, woo. All right, Paul Fisher. Acceptance, non judgment. You see, there's a little theme going on here, right? All right, who are we missing? We're missing table two, we're missing table four. Uh, hint, hint. Okay, we got table four. Okay. There we have it. Look at this, it's got stars on it and everything, you know. They were, they were like the artsy table over here. It says, bring it back, breaking bread groups and bowl prayers. Yeah. All right. We have bowl prayers, but we have to bring the breaking bread back. You're right. All right. Thank you. All right. Table 10. Table 10 with lots of action points, right? Give it up for table 10. Give it up for table 10. <laughs> Use 
using our talents and skills to provide services to the community. Example, mending broken sinks in others' home. I, I, I had that just not long ago. Uh, and, uh, offering self-care necessities to women, shelter, women in shelters. Nice, I like that. Table 10. Are we missing any? Table two. Table two. You did? All right, all right. My assistant here. <laughs> Give it up for table two. Who were very patient in, in, their, in their wait to be read. Uh, serving each other, visiting the community, and inviting the community, and then bringing them to grace. See, this always feels like I wrote this. That's the last of it. So, this is, right? Yeah. So, we have a little bit, yep, yep, there we go. So, this is our completed grace community where all of these things we want to um, we want to embrace. When you look around in our community, you see lots of diversity, and that is wonderful. And we want to be people who exercise our emotional um, uh, muscle of being grateful and being curious rather than isolating and then pushing people away who might be different. Because every tongue, every nation, every one of us at some point at the end of time will be worshiping together. So as we become better at in, in, um, working on being grateful and embracing our differences rather than living in a world that we know so often um, separates us and isolates us, let us reflect the kingdom of God that God has called us to. The church, it's, it's embedded in the church that we are supposed to be diverse. We were never expected, we were, it was never intended to be uniform. We were always um, to bring uh, differences together because we have one spirit and we have one commonality of love. Uh, and that is what we are uh, to live out each and every day. So um, I hope that you all uh, have enjoyed this meal, this message today. Um, if you're still hungry, there's still food back there, there and there's still um, some uh, like desserts to be had, um, but, uh, and you can stay as long as you want to just chit chat at your table, but um, let, let me pray for us, okay? So let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we are diverse. We thank you that you have given us so many good things in life. Help us to exercise that, that um, emotional muscle of even when we're faced with challenges and differences that um, we might not line up with, that we become more curious and that we grow in our love for one another. I thank you for this church. I thank you for each and every person that's here that's been coming for a long time or if it's their first time. We just thank you that we could come together. We could share food. We could share... Um, uh, a piece of puzzle together and um, we just thank you that you are a God who truly loves us and it is in Jesus's name that we pray amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> we did it <laughs>